All right. All right, guys. I was going to call it a year because it got really cold a couple weeks ago and it rained and everything. And it actually snowed. Uh, the video I put out last week was just a suspension recap. And that was Sunday and it was actually snowing up here. It was like 30, 30 degrees. It was cold. But we were having a lovely case of Indian summer. And you know, the rest of the week after Tuesday, it's been near 70. So um, I mentioned on the uh, pinion seal video that I need to do a shaft seals. So we're gonna show you this is the left side. If you didn't notice when I did these brakes, that uh, take you right in there. I don't know if you can see it. But see how black it all is in here. This shaft seal is leaking. And I'm also going to replace the shaft bearings. Because I don't know how long they've been in there. The truck has 262,000 miles on it. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to change the uh, shaft seal and bearing on the, I'm gonna show the left side since that's the bad side. But in order to do that, first you have to come under here. And you gotta drain your differential fluid. So that means you gotta crank, take all these bolts out now. This goes for, this truck is the 14 bolt, uh, 1500 heavy duty. So I got the big 14 bolt we ran, but even the 10 bolts. Um, it's the same thing. So, what you gotta do is uh, take out all your bolts. And I'm not wasting time today. It's a nice day. But, uh, we're just gonna use power. because it's faster. That bolt came out all the way. And I tell you what, differential fluid, differential fluid smells bad. It smells like natural gas. <laughs> Not the most pleasant thing. Try to make sure you have a nice drip pan. I have a double layer drip pan. And remember your brackets, this upper one has a washer on it for the brake line bracket for the main line. And you have another line over here with a small washer on it for the right side brake line. So remember the rest of the bolts are all gonna be the same. Just pull them all out. And you wanna clean them up later before you put them back in. Now I've already got some diff fluid dripping out of there. And some people will sit there and tell you, you know, just take a flathead screwdriver or something, but really, you really shouldn't do that. You leave one bolt in on the top and just try to try to try to tap on the cover to break that seal. Because uh, what you could end up doing is uh, damaging the edge. Now, if that's, you know, not going to work, then by all means, use a small flathead screwdriver and make sure you just don't 
try your best not to damage the diff cover or the uh, uh, housing of the dry shaft now it is loose here so I'm I can just crack it loose. I can just wiggle it around instead of uh, smacking with a flathead chisel or whatever to get it loose it came loose on its own oh I didn't miss that smell and it's all loose here it's just hanging on the top bolt that I put back in so if you put a bolt back in then uh, the cover doesn't come off of your face and you're not wearing it all <clears throat> and I did change this a couple years ago but it's pretty black so after you get your cover all loose and you flew it out and good thing I got a double pan I got a double bottom pan so you just let this here drain while you work inside I'm just gonna let the pan sit there and drain we'll clean that bolt off a little bit so Now it's got your diff cover off. We'll move the camera around to the side you need to see. So this is your ring gears and stuff. And as you can see, I have a posi locker. And what you want to do is just <clears throat> try and spin it around if you can. Crap. That's what I forgot to do. I was a dum dum and didn't leave the truck in neutral. So give me a second. I'm going to pause it for a second and then go shift it into neutral so that I can rotate the assembly because there's a long pin in there. And it's held in by a little bolt, so that's what you gotta get around. So, just a quick second. All right, so I spun it around because this pin here is held in by this 10 millimeter bolt. Now, I did have to lock it back into park, otherwise, it'll shift. But what you do is you crack your 10 millimeter bolt, it holds your tiny pin in. And you slide that out and then you slide your pin out just like that and you just lay that pin in the oil pan now get these shafts out you have to push push the uh, drive shaft in the axle in and Boy, this video is not going out very well. I need to get a light in here. So, pause it for one more second and I'll go get my light. So I can see there's two little C-clips that hold the shafts in. So, give me one more minute. So, I put it back into neutral. And I got a light because you've got to spin this around. So, all you got to do is take your drive shaft. where you can see in here now I don't know probably can't see that c-clip but right there is the c-clip and once you push your axle in that c-clip is loose you just take your magnet go in there and uh, grab it out of there and there it is and drop your pan, drop it in your pan with your oil, and that releases the uh, drive shaft. So now we're gonna go over here to the outside.
So. Did that. There we go. Now we'll zoom back out. Now, once you get that clip out, it's really easy. The shaft to just carefully slide the whole shaft right out and stand it off to the side one more clean this ring up a little bit First, you got to get the <clears throat> first, you got to get the old ring out of here. And the quickest way is just to take a flathead screwdriver or chisel, just like I did with the pinion seal. destroy the seal. And there it is. There's the seal. It's gonna, there's fluid in here, so. Now these bearings don't look too bad. But, you know, if it ain't, usually I'm with a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But considering the age of most of this stuff. So. I have these nice polar sets. And how these work is this goes in like that, and then you swing it out behind it and pull it, and then put this cover in front of it, and you drive this nut back down. The trick is finding the right size for the bearing you're using. This has three different sizes. And somebody ran this one all the way down last time I used it. That one's too big, so I got the right one. <clears throat> if 
just like that. And you can, you can see it's locked in there pretty good. And this is a shield to kind of keep the bearings from coming out and hitting you in the face. Because, you know, they wouldn't do that, would they? Of course they would, because the race is probably worn out really good. Especially in this old of a truck. And the idea is to pull the whole thing out together as one unit. But that doesn't always happen either. So next is the slide hammer. This is your slide hammer. It screws in here. And you want to get as many threads in as you can. The more threads, the less it's going to fall apart when you do that. It's a little loose. And you just slide the hammer. And that's not what I wanted to happen. That's not good. Make sure you don't lose any of your bearings in there either. So, I'll get all those out. But unfortunately, the casting is not going to cooperate. So now we gotta find a happy medium. And don't be worried, that happens to everybody because most of the bearings will shatter. <laughs> most of the bearings shatter like that. And the best thing to try and do is to get back in there some kind of closeness. Kind of hold it against the inner race part as hard as you can. Try your best to keep it in there, which apparently I'm not doing a good job of. So who knows? This may turn into a two-parter too. I don't know who ran these down like this. This is ridiculous. But we're going to try this bigger one. See if maybe it'll grab better. Because all it's got to do is grab the back of the race. Enough.
come. It's almost out now. There you go. Now that your destroyed shaft bearing is out, I'm going to do, do a little in house cleaning. a little bit and get your new bearing it's out of a little plastic ring in it and that's why I had the plastic ring in it <laughs> don't take the plastic ring out until you get the bearing in that's the number one Because now all the bearings are all over the place, you know. So, they look the same on both sides, and that's fine. So, it, uh, I don't think it matters which way it goes in. So, next, you got to find a bearing pusher that fits on there. Like I, that was pretty good, the first one I picked out. So you put your bearing pressure together and I have all these tools because I work at a garage but um, you could probably rent them so then you use your bearing pusher and what you're hearing for is you know it's in when the sound changes Hear that metally sound? It got deeper. That's in there. got some fresh silk on here so I always put a little bit and I've watched people put like a whole good gob of this stuff on here a little bit of black RTV and just spread it around you don't need a lot because this red stuff is actually a sealer too I just like a little added protection that's all bit of protection a little bit of extra protection that's all so get that into position 
then you got to find another pusher for the seal to push the seal in if you do it the right way now last time I didn't have this when I did I had it but the pinion seal because the pinion sticks out so far um, yeah you can't really This is the same as the bearing. When you hear that metal change, that sound, that chinging there, it's in. So, well, that presents another problem. That plastic ring is inside now. Boy, this is just riddling me with problems. Okay, I got it out. Stupid plastic ring, I don't even know why it's in there. <laughs> The other bearing fell apart, but it's all right. So now we're going to try to slide your shaft back in. This is where you kind of got to be careful. You don't want to totally let it ride on that new seal. And you slide it in until you hit the pinion or the ring gear. And then you gotta maneuver it into position. Once you hit that ring gear, and then you just, oh, there it is. We're going to come back under here. We're going to take this clip. And we're going to wipe it down. Clean it up a little bit. Wipe all the old grease off. And then, with your magnet, you're just going to wiggle it back into place. And then you grab your shaft outside. And thunk, it's in. So that's how you change your seal. And uh, bearing on one of these. Then you got to pull this back together. So we'll see what we can do here. But I think I think I have to. I'm gonna have to make a second video of putting it all back together. So uh, there are gonna be a part two out here uh, shortly, cause uh, I don't have a, a die grinder here. Duh, I forgot that. Cause you gotta clean all this up and the other side of the pan. Cause I use uh, silicone, so you gotta have clean mating surfaces. So. I got to get back into work and uh, remember to bring home a die grinder and a disc a couple discs so I could do this properly so the trucks gonna be 
sitting for a week until I finish this. Well, a few days because it's Saturday. I'm going to put this out tomorrow. And uh, we'll go from there. So it'll at least be sitting until Monday. Until I get home from work on Monday. So subscribe if you want. Look forward to part two. We'll see you in the next one.